Hello and welcome to an Arsenal podcast. Um, my name is Carl, as you all know, at that London guy on Twitter. Today with me, I have some very handsome people and one not so handsome. I'll let you decide who that person is. First of all, we have the person who's always here. You know, he's the man behind all of us. It is Danny, the GFP. How are you, son? I am all right, Pops. I was getting all excited. Shan's had to give me some tranquilizers because I'm meeting you and Femster at the game on Sunday. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> yes, of course, of course. Also, we have the Welsh wonder, the man who, if you don't tappy tappy, he's not very happy happy. It is Jason. How are you, Jason? All right, Paolo, you doing? Not too bad. Jason is a late substitute. He's that person that comes in the 90th minute and scores that hat trick. Thank you very much for coming on, Jason. <laughs> You've got far too many high hopes, pal. <laughs> and last but no means least whatsoever, it is the delectable uh, Femster. How are you? I'm good. Hi, everyone. Good to be on. Thanks for inviting me once again. You're the person who's going to bring some calm to when Jason goes on his rant. So I will let you be the one to tell him to uh, calm it down. (laughs) I think you picked the wrong day for that. (laughs) (laughs) Well, there's only one place we need to start, and that is with the uh, 2-2 draw against Watford. Um, We all know that it wasn't the best of games uh, whatsoever. Um, Femi, I'll stick with you. Um, When you saw the team uh, announced, what did you think of the team? Um, okay, being honest, I didn't think it was a bad team. My, you know, my positive thoughts were, you know, we put all our creative players out there, which was good to see. Obviously, the problem was I didn't know the formation we were going to play. So I think maybe when we move on from just the team choices uh, to the formation, then it didn't make sense. But if you just look purely at the team sheet, it looked good. We had our creative players there. Obviously, we knew players like Xhaka. They're going to start anyway, let's be honest. Um, so there's not going to be any changes with Xhaka. The back four, we pretty much got no choice at the moment with the back four. So that was always going to be it. And then you think, okay, then you've got your four, your three most creative players up front, Ozil, um, Oba, and uh, Pepe. And I thought that's how it would go, but clearly that's not how it went uh, as we started, to be honest. Yeah, you're right. It was... uh, I think the team... I think you could have done better. Uh, Jason, for you, when you saw Ozil on the starting lineup, was you shocked or did you think this was the... sort of one of the games that he should have been brought back into? I was a little surprised. I've got to be honest with you. Um, Simply because you're, you're coming off the back of two poor performances... I know we showed grit against um, Scum, but, you know, everybody was telling me before the game, oh, we're going to smash them, they're a joke. And, you know, yeah, we could have gone on to win it, to win the game, but so could they, you know what I mean? We, we, we've we been leaking shots for the, well, from Burnley onwards, and it's not been good, but... Um, I, I was shocked to see him and Sabayo start the game together. That's what I was sh- really shocked at. I mean, like Fermi said, it's nice to have two creative players on, but when we when we saw the way they sort of set up, it, it, you know, there was absolutely no linkage there whatsoever, was there? No, you're right. But uh, I'll stick with you, Jason, just a quick one. Do you think that he went with Sabayas and Ozil because he looked at Watford team and thought they are bottom of the league, so this is an opportunity to go out there and almost almost pepper their goal because you, you, you're working with one of the most deadly strikers in, in Europe with Aubameyang. And if you've got two very good technical players who are meant to be, you know, good passers with Sabias and also Ozil. Do you think that this was an opportunity that he saw that we could create a lot of chances also with Pepe as well? Look, if I'm brutally honest, I have no idea what Unai Una Emery thinks. I don't get the guy whatsoever, OK? Um, you know, the, you, you see some of the setups he played last season, let alone this season already. You know, he went three at the back at home against Cardiff three at the back at home against Fulham. Okay, you know, he set up defensively against two of the worst teams in the league, you know, at home, right? So, 
I, I, you know, I, I don't get what's behind his thinking. The one thing that's for sure is what, how, whichever way he is thinking, it's not joined up. It's not getting the best out of the team. And we, we, we are disjointed um, from back to middle, from middle to, to, to the forwards as well. So, I mean, I, I genuinely am going to clue what that guy's thinking. And I haven't for a long time. Yeah, we'll get on to the um, manager debate a bit later. But Danny, um, we started the first half. We I wouldn't say we was in total control, but we weren't really threatened by Watford whatsoever. Um, what did you make of the first half up to the goal? I thought that it was uh, it was looking a bit a bit like I wasn't sure what was going to happen. I thought, well, Erzul is. is uh, when I saw the lineup, I thought, oh, it, we're going to kind of do the Liverpool thing with the two forwards and well, Firmino plays a little bit deeper. I thought Ozil was going to come and play that position. I thought that's going to work pretty well. And then um, uh, Ceballos plays on the left-hand side for Spain and I don't watch them, but and during the week he had a magnificent game or two for Spain. And I thought, oh, okay, the only thing we're going to have to know is whether Xhaka is going to drop deep because we you automatically think Torreira is going to be the one that's going to play in the hole just ahead of the front, two front central defenders. And I thought he's gonna. So he's not playing again, even though he's, he's he should be fit by now. He, he, I know he got a knock when he was playing for Uruguay and got taken off. I think against Costa Rica, possibly or Peru, and then a second game against the USA, he didn't play. So maybe that's why he didn't start the game. But uh, but then I thought one of those two needs to sit in front of the, the central defenders because we've learned this season that we need someone there to protect the two clowns at the back, um, Luis and, and Papi. And then I thought, well, well, he's not doing it. And then once I started watching the game, I thought, hold on, how comes? That's the natural position for Xhaka when you've got those three midfielders, not his best position. And then when the central defenders are getting the ball, then Gwendouzi's coming into the middle ahead of them, picking the ball up, and then he's taking it out. So when he comes in, our right-hand side, there's no cover for, for Maitland-Niles there. And I thought, that's a little bit weird. And I thought, maybe they're just going to move it around a little bit. You know, like occasionally you'll have a Bum Young and Pepe will swap sides during, during the game. I thought maybe they'd take it in turns, but it wasn't. It was every time. Gwendouzi was coming in, getting the ball, passing it around, and he'd go back out, wide, out to the right-hand side side of the central midfield then Xhaka would drop deep again and I thought well that, this isn't going to end up causing problems because every time you do that you're leaving huge big gaps and I thought oh no this isn't going to be good no he scored the first goal I thought everything's going to be all right yeah and talking about the first goal Femi um just a quick question I, I'll probably know the answer to it in the build-up did you think it was a, a foul um no no I didn't think it was a foul <laughs> No, no, so no. I, I'm the same. I didn't think it was a foul. Either, it, but... To be fair, I thought he, he got the ball. Um, it's not like a tackle where he got the ball and went through from the back of the player. It was a, it was from the side as well. So I don't think it would have been harsh to give that as a foul. But I, I wouldn't be surprised by any foul that we give away these days, anyway. But <laughs> no, but um, yeah. So it was Kolesnac who had won the ball. Um, Sabayas won the ball. Sorry, Sabayas yeah. won the ball and passed it to Kalasinac, and then Kalasinac yeah. uh, passed it to Abamian, which was a brilliant uh, finish. He just uh, controlled it, turn and shot. Yeah, uh, b- brilliant goal. He was he was having a quiet game up to then. I thought, um, I thought he was a little bit frustrated. He came deep to get the ball a couple of times, but once you get that guy in the box, he, he, I mean, it's funny, isn't it? it? He misses some some odd chances sometimes, and you think. Like seriously, you just missed that. But what recently I, I saw his, his shot conversion this season is like fifty percent at the moment, which is just ridiculous. Um, but he, if you get him in the box, you know, with just instinctively with nothing to think about, he he will just he will just finish it. Uh, God knows where we'd be without him, to be honest. It's very you're not wrong there, Jason. What did you think of the uh, first goal? Because uh, Femi was right. Up until then, I don't know how many touches Aubameyang actually had in the ball. We were under the cosh up until that point, weren't we? You know, I mean, they did. I think um, Leonard made three or four good saves, or decent saves at the very least. Um, it was all Watford. Um, I thought it was a good, great tackle by Ceballos, to be fair to him. Um, VAR checked it. They thought it was okay. It's just Will Hughes being like Josh Dorr, very ginger, very moany. Um, you know, so it, it, you know, I don't know what he was pissing and moaning about, to be honest with you. He's a scumbag player, Will Hughes is. Um, but then C- Caller and then Obamian's finish, it was just great to see them. You know, it was, it was, it, it was, a t- it was like Arsenal of old on the break, right? We turned the ball over, you know, sharp run, good pass, 
and just an instinctive dead-eyed finish. It was it was really good to see. I mean, I think um, uh, I, I just think that you know Aubameyang this season has been magnificent. Um, you know, people people talk a lot about Lacazette, but Aubameyang's work rate off the ball, his intent in front of goal, his passion for the game, he's just absolutely magic. I have to agree with you, and I can't believe there was some people at the end of last season talking about Josh they, would, uh, they would sell him to bring in funds. Like Josh Dahl. <laughs> Josh Dahl. Josh Dahl. Well... Look, at him, look, he's from the north, or he lives in the north, so what do you expect? Um, and then almost quickly, as the first goal came, the uh, second goal came. Uh, Danny, to talk us through the uh, second goal. Yeah, I, I got this wrong when I was doing the live show. I said it was um, Pepe that said that got the ball from Ozil, but anyway, Ozil made uh, was it, yeah, it was, it was Kolasinic who did the run for the first one because I'm doing all the, the tweets and stuff. Uh, yeah, so it's on the right hand side, and then uh, Urzel gets the ball, does a little bit of magic, and then uh, he manages what looked like instantly. I thought that's offside, but when they played it back and the VIR looked at it, it wasn't even close to being offside. He, he uh, managed to see through time and space like he has the ability, and then he put the through the ball through to Maitland Niles. Maitland Niles then crossed it, and Abami Young put it in from six inches. And you're thinking, well, that's it, 2 0. These are, these are a shit team. They've they've played four games this season, lost three, drawn one. They've got a new manager. They, they haven't got Troy Deeney there kicking people around. They've got some of their other best players out. The only player they've got is um, De La Foyou. Uh It's going to be 2-0. We're going to go in at half-time. Maybe the second half come out, solidify it a little bit. Nothing to worry about. There we go. We're in second place in the league now. That didn't happen. No, unfortunately. <laughs> so, Jason, I'm going to come to you on this one because I feel that you would be the one to answer this correctly. You go in to the team that's at the bottom of the league, as Danny said, played three games in the Premier League, lost three games in the Premier League. Um, you are two new up. Like, to your players, what do you say to your players? Because for me, I know we're going to get onto this later on, but I don't understand how he said, um, Xhaka said that they came out in the second half and they were scared. Now, if you are two new up in a game, how did you come out in the second half scared? I genuinely don't know. I think there's so much confusion within the camp as to what Emery's trying to achieve. I mean, you know, you, you had the Alan Smith article last week. And for all those people who don't think Alan Smith is an Arsenal legend, he scored one of the goals at Anfield in 89. He scored the winning goal in the European Cup Winners' Cup final. And the guy's got 100 plus goals for the Arsenal. Is it, I'm sure it's 100 plus, is it, Dan? Ooh, yeah, but you're saying I'm just reading people's it, questions because people are putting Aaron, questions Aaron, in here. Aaron Smith's got 100 plus goals for the Arsenal. I'm sure he has, isn't he? Oh, yeah, he got a damn lot. And he sacrificed when Ian Wright came to the club. He sacrificed his career and moved back to be like a kind of Bergkamp thing. And then he went from scoring 20 odd goals a season to scoring three or four and setting them all up for variety. So yeah, as you were saying, yeah. magnificent. Okay. This guy did a glittering career with the Arsenal. Now he's a he's a he's a, he's a commentator. Fine, but. You know, what he put in the papers in that, in that article was meant to get out. I know it's been meant, it's somebody's spoken to him and it's meant to be in the public eye. You know, and people questioning him as an Arsenal legend. If you're questioning Alan Smith's status as an Arsenal legend, you're a fucking mug. A fucking mug. It's all I've got to say in it, okay? There's definitely, there's definitely issues in the dressing room. You know, to anybody who says there's not, just look at the performances. Just look at them. You you know, if you're looking at that first half performance, you go into halftime, you say to the players, right, you know, you, you, you took everything they've thrown at you, you've wrestled control away from them, you've scored two great goals, you know, no, no matter how, you know, Flores will say, oh, yeah, we stood off from the second. That doesn't matter. You can only play what's in front of you. And they did, and they did it magnificently. Great goal to watch. Two great goals. You come out the second half and you try to silence the crowd straight away. You're sharp. You're at it from the off. You you know, you wrestle the impetus off. You've already wrestled the impetus off them. Now go for the juggler. Now kill the game off. But no, uh, I, I don't know what's going on in that dressing room. It's obviously some unrest there. There's obviously confusion, okay? You only have to look back to last season 
to see how more often he chops and changes. You can have a pop at Socrates all you want. You can have a pop at Jacker all you want. You can have a pop at Luis all you want. The problem is these guys haven't got um, an idea of a settled identity as to how the manager wants to play. You look at the different lineups this season and it's just, it's confusing for everyone. We don't, you know, when Femster talks about he was happy with the lineup, so was I. I was a bit surprised at it, but I thought, great. But when they actually set up, it's totally different as to how you think it's going to be. You know, people can talk about Unai Emery having a master plan. You fuck a Cloud Cuckoo Land. Cloud Cuckoo Land. I you guess know? my my issue is if you were to ask someone um, what kind of team is Arsenal, you, they couldn't, you, no one could explain what it is. Like, are we a team that defends well? No. Are we a team that uh, attacks on the counter? No. Are we an attacking team? No. Are we a possession-based team? No. So you're right what you say, Jason. We don't really have an identity because no one can, no Arsenal supporter at the moment can say what kind of team we are. And for me, I'm kind of getting bored of the, of the discussion of, oh, we're a team in transition. Like, how long are we going to be in transition? Like, how, what, what do we have to do for us to have an identity? So I'll come to you, Femi. So, so sorry, can I just come back on that quickly? I do apologize. Yeah. I think the, 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 the real issue I've got with it all is you've got um, Emery in the paper saying, we're protagonists. We're the ones setting the agenda. We're attacking. No, we're not. We're just none of those things. We're absolutely none of those things. What he says and what you see are two different things. And I don't understand what he's seeing on the pitch or in training that that, that, that puts these setups in his mind. I really don't. You know, you, you can't go to Liverpool and give two of the best fullbacks in Europe all that space. You can't, you can't. But he's done it again. Okay? So, you know, what he's saying and what you see, they're no relation to each other. You know what? what I'm, I, you know, I, I'm a band that when people bring stats up to me, I usually, I hate it so much. I'm like, star, I hate stats. Xhaka's stats. Urzo. But some of the stats that we're seeing actually bears fruit to what we're watching as well. So we can't say some of these stats are, are fake. So when you're saying what type of team are we, I saw a stat today about our pressing, that we're 19th in the league in pressing, like in terms of pressing. So if we don't press, that means I should expect us to be decent in midfield and defence. But we're giving up the most shots. So that doesn't add up. We're defending so deep. We, we don't have a midfield at the moment. We're... Our defence was in the box for nearly the whole of the second half. I couldn't believe what I was watching. I was like, this isn't Barcelona we're playing. This is Watford where we're playing, for God's sake. They're bottom of the league. We shouldn't be, you know, intimidated. And I think what's happened is we wanted a manager that would, you know, sort out a team, concentrate on a team. But I think we've gone so far the other way from, um, from Mr. Wenger. Mr. Wenger was always about, you know, we do what we want. And that's it. We don't care who we're playing. Now we've got a manager that's so obsessed with what the other team are going to do that if someone said to you, give me five pounds to name the team from week to week, I don't think anyone could name the team from week to week, let alone the formation that you're going to play from week to week. Then what you've got then is Watford obviously had a different manager two weeks ago than they have now. So you're preparing for Watford that was two weeks ago. So maybe what for two weeks ago, their full backs weren't bombing on, you know, they weren't playing with, with wide players. Delafer was playing on a different side or something like that. So he's gone in and played a system to face the other Watford. And it's like, why don't you find something that defines you as a team and then work from there, work from your own base and go forward from there. Don't always think about what the other team are going to do because you just end up getting confused. Danny, I'll uh, come to you. So playing out from the back. In the first half, we tried to do it so many times and we almost got caught. And... I'm so, I'm just just like you, and I'm sure Jason, I'm sure Femi was doing exactly the same. At certain times, you would scream at your TV, just kick it long. Because for me, 
Watford, as we started to do it so many times, Watford grew into the game and they got smart. And our players got dumber, so it seems. So Watford had four people along the box. They had two on each side of the 18-yard box and they had two in the middle. So, therefore, as soon as the ball is played to any defender, they're going to rush into the box. It's the first thing they're going to do because, as you know, the rule has changed that you don't need to kick it out of the box anymore. So, what I don't understand is that their defenders then pushed up a little bit because, obviously, they had their strikers and their midfield pushing up as well. So, for me, that surely should leave just a little bit of space for our players because if you've got your two centre-backs in the six-yard box, it seems, you had your... Uh, left and right back, just on the outside. You had Guendouzi on the tip of the 18-yard box. And then you had Jaka maybe just in front of him. So that leaves Ceballos, um, Pepe, Ozil, and Aubameyang, who were not going to be occupied by all four defenders. So for me, surely kicking it long would have made more sense. And I understand why he didn't do it, because he was saying that Watford were apparently a bigger team than us and they would win in the second ball or win in the flick-ons. Whereas I can kind of maybe understand that. Surely, if you're going to lose the ball, you lose the ball high up the pitch rather than lose it in your 18-yard box, which obviously what happened on the uh, first Watford goal, Danny. Yeah, you're right with all, all of that that you were saying. And we can't understand why he's doing it. We saw this at the beginning of last season, that this is what I made Czech decide to retire because this is, seems to be the way that Emery's going to do it. Czech knew he couldn't do it. He couldn't teach an old dog new tricks. And we saw that when we, we bought um, Leno from the, the German team, who I always get the names mixed up, it's either um, Mönchengladbach or the other one. Um, was it Le Who did they buy him from? Anyway, yeah, it doesn't... Listen. No, Leverkusen. No, um, we, we knew there that it was one of them players like like um, Neuer, where you can play it out from the back. So you don't need to give it to the two defenders. And if if you really might, if he has to insist that he wants to play it out from from the back like that, don't do the same thing every time. Because like you were saying, you got two there, you got two there of their players because they're not allowed to encroach in the box now when the goal when the goalkeeper is about to take the goal kick. So. Every single time, he's giving it to one of the two defenders. And of the two defenders you're going to give it to, which one of them has got the better passing ability? Because it sure as hell isn't going to be Pappy that does it. Luis is the one who can ping a ball the length of the field and get it quite near one of our players. But to do the same thing over and over and over. And you know, it was just like clockwork. Every single time he gets the ball, pass it to one of our defenders. And then the defender goes, um, uh, I'm a defender. Uh, what am I going to do? And then he, he panics and then he kicks it and then Delafoe comes in, knocks it across to the other bloke and the other bloke puts it in. You're thinking all that hard work that we have done to build up a 2-0 lead away from home for like, like you were saying, that uh, as we saw when when um, when Willock and uh, Nelson came on, that, that kind of proved Emery's point that, that they've got big players in the middle of the pitch and they're the ones that can, they bullied those two for the whole time they were on the pitch. They couldn't get anything. They were running down the end of the pitch and having the ball taken off them, going, thank you very much, young man. You is 50p. On your way, go get yourself some sweets, take the ball down the other end and do it. And then we just, just that just went on for the whole of the second half. And you're thinking, at what point do you, do you realise, hold on, this isn't working? Now, last season, what did it take? Four, five games before he stopped wanting um, Czech to play it out? And then he put Leno in goal and things were a little bit better. So maybe Hopefully, he's going to look at this now and go, well, uh, it didn't work for the first five games last season. It's not working so far this season. Let's either stop doing it or start um, giving it out to the fullbacks, getting the fullback to come and get it, or hoofing it downfield, or giving it to one of the defenders and saying, as soon as you get it, you you knock it downfield. But I've seen other teams struggle with this as well. I think I was watching Man United, and they were struggling with it because you just get shut down immediately. Because I know like them, when they showed the replay of, of their first goal, you saw that I think Delafoy, who had one part of his leg inside the area. And people going, oh, no, it shouldn't be allowed. No, don't put yourself in a situation where you are expecting VAR to go, well, he's got a shoelace in there, uh, and that goal's offside. Don't do it. It doesn't work. Stop bloody doing it. I Watch guess this. My... Oh, sorry, sorry. No, go, go for me. Sorry, on the, on, this is on the, after the Liverpool game, I sent this in a WhatsApp group chat. I said the Burnley game and the Liverpool game, we set up right on the edge of our box, and we either kick it out, and we're immediately under pressure. Can't keep happening. I remember in the I watching the Burnley game at home and I couldn't believe how much Burnley pressed us in that situation. That was the second game of the season. That was Burnley at home. Burnley are not a pressing team, but they figured it out straight away what we were going to do. And we kept doing the same thing over and over. And it just became really like tedious to the point where the home fans actually were booing 
the fact that, and we were winning at that point, but the fans were booing the fact that we kept doing the same thing and we're still doing it. I, I just don't know. It got to the point the other day, then Xhaka started telling Leno to kick it long. But then what you had then was you had two centre-backs in the box and Leno kicking it long. So now if Watford wins the header and heads it straight back down our end, who no one's going to be... There's going to be players... It's, it was just causing chaos, to be honest with you. But then this is why you, for me, then you should have Xhaka, because Xhaka always starts, and Guendouzi ready. I mean, for me... Yeah, I understand Watford were probably bigger and taller than all our players. I think our tallest player on the football pitch will probably be in Papa and Abame. I think Abame is about 6'3". Um, so you can try and aim for him and try and get him to do a flick on. But for me, like you said, if Burnley figured it out straight away, then obviously Watford would have watched that video and said, I oh, know Arsenal are going to keep on trying to play out from the back. Let's see what we can do. Now, like I said to you, Watford players got smart. They started croaching the box. So at some point, and Jason, I'll come to you, like it didn't work. It didn't work. So for me, why do our players not have the tactical nous to then say, do you know what? This isn't working. Let's try and kick it long. Why is it they were still trying to do the thing and obviously it cost us a goal? The manager's asking them to play this way, first and foremost, okay? Um, obviously, something's happened there. You, you saw uh, Leno last season. I mean, Leno won the place because Czech got injured, if I, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Okay? And... You'd see him when he's under pressure launching it. The nonsense from kickoffs, I don't understand why you've got two centre halves so close to the keeper to begin with, okay? Because you're just, you know, okay, you, you talk about opening up space, okay? But we haven't got the movement then in behind the front press to take advantage of that space. There's, you know, there's this simple rules to sport, okay? Ball beats the man, no substitute for pace, all these things, right? Huh? In rugby, you have something called a blitz defence, where the defence it's the it's the press, where the defence rushes up to put pressure to close you down early. If you want to hold them up, you chip a ball over the top every now and again, and that puts doubt in people's minds. So hopefully you get a dog leg in that defence, which you're able to take it then take advantage of. Okay, it's just creating the space for attacking players. We're not chipping over at any point because Una is asking them to play a certain way. Right? Or? Every single time he's asking them to do this. Now, as much as I'm annoyed about the way we, you know, we don't make other teams think, I'm even more annoyed at the movement up ahead of the defenders. Because you know, the, the midfield is not, you know, it's not offering themselves. You, you, you want to look at the goal? Yes, yeah, Socrates. Look, you know I'm not a fan of Socrates, okay? But fucking Gwendoos, he's not even looking for the ball. He's not even fucking looking for the ball. You know, last week, okay, you know, I'm hearing people say, oh, that's one of the greatest North London derby performances ever. Bollocks, was it? You know, the guy played very, very well, but all too often flat is to deceive, okay? You've got to have good movement off the ball. That's where we're letting ourselves down. You know, you, you can talk about playing out from the back all you bloody want, but unless you've got good movement, unless there's players moving into space, dragging players wide, dragging players out of position, you're not going to do it. And this is consistently our problem. It's, you know, if Unai can't see it, he doesn't deserve the job. Okay, he doesn't deserve the job. Socrates is an absolute mug for what he did. Absolute mug, but then he's you know he continues to make mistakes consistently. He got away with it last season because the witch hunt was on from Mustafi. The witch hunt is on for Jacques this season. He's got away with three already this season, I know. But Gwen Doozy is just as culpable, just as culpable. You know, oh, it, it, I, absolute I agree fucking with you joke. Absolute fucking joke. For me, it's just. Uh... I just don't understand how our players didn't see that this was coming. Like, they got away with one with Guendouzi, and for them to not see that this was coming, it just shows that 
our players are not smart or they're not told to think. Like, if they were told to play out from the back and that's what the manager wants, fine. But at a certain time, you've got to be able to change up on the football pitch and Jacko as the captain kind of has to take uh, I don't want to I don't want to have this witch hunt for Jacko I really don't but it's at a certain time you've got to say to your goalkeeper to kick it long you can see what they're doing like I said if you kicked it long they would have taken out four players out of the game yeah but Carl you've got David Luiz Champions League winner how many caps for Brazil likes to play football Socrates for as much as I'm more fun of Socrates there's a wealth of experience there okay right on Sabayos, talented player, World Cup winner in Mesut Ozil. Okay, you know, there's enough experience on that pitch. Okay, why do they feel that they can't change it up? That's the question we should be asking because yeah. it's not just about okay, why don't they take responsibility? There's obviously something in there, there's obviously something happening where they feel they can't, but you know. I don't, I don't yeah. know, it's just it's, it's weird. It, it, it's a question that obviously there's only one person can take that on, and that's the manager. But you know, he's got some questions to answer. So, Danny, we made a substitution in the 60th minute. We took off Sabios and we bought on uh, Willock. Is that a substitution you would have made at that time? Poor old Sabias was a bit hot, wasn't he? He's a, he's a Spaniard um, living in Madrid, one of the hottest parts of bloody Europe. Oh, I'm a little bit hot, I need to come off. How about you? About No, that's bullshit. Maybe that's another mistranslation. He wasn't hot. He was. He looked pissed off when he came off. Uh, bringing on Willock, well, I kind of see the point in that because uh, Sabias was playing on the left-hand side. Willock is um, a, a central midfielder with the ability to, to go all over the place. It's not like he brought on... Um, uh, Nelson, who is mainly just plays down down the, the, the left wing. I suppose he could play on the other side. And I was thinking, well, of all the players I'd have taken off, I mean, I'm, Ozil's only played one game, so he's going to get no grief for me, but it'd be, I'd have taken Ozil off. I know he did take Ozil off. Um, what did he take him off? 11 minutes later. But I'd have taken Ozil off and uh, played Ceballos there and told Willock, you just go in midfield, you get stuck in, move the ball, and do, do like what Gwen Doozy does, just running around, getting on people's nerves and and, and uh, just getting in the way. But then then at that point, what was it? That was on the 60th minute and uh, it was 2-1 at the time. And I also remember thinking, maybe we should go a little bit more defensive here. We need, Xhaka isn't doing that thing where he sits in front of the two. Taraya needs to do that. Is Taraya fit? I'm, I'm going to say Taraya's name 50. I'm going to say Lucas from now on. It's a lot easier. I can't fuck that up. So uh, that, why are you bringing on a, a less defensive player? Uh, Sabios has shown when he has played for us that he is brilliant going through the middle. That, that game against, was it Burnley or Newcastle? It was absolutely magnificent. And since then, he's played him out on the left side of a midfield three. And I don't want to see him play there. If he plays, I want him to play in the the AR role. I can't say the actual words, people, because if somebody will get all excited and start slapping his thighs. So, <laughs> oh, here we go. The doll's coming. The doll's coming. <laughs> oh, dear. Look at that. <laughs> it's a disgrace. Anyway, so that, that's that's what we kind of want. So, I would have thought it'd been better not to try and to shore this, this defence up or... I'm thinking, just looking at who else was on the bench that we didn't bring on. Martinez, you can't have two goalkeepers. That's not allowed. Shit. Chambers, maybe... Um, I might have thought bring Chambers on because Chambers is going to go, look, I can play in central defence. I can go and play ahead of the central defence in a defensive midfield role like he did when he was at Fulham. He played for right back when he was with Middlesbrough on loan. So someone just to come in and and, and shore that defence up because they were pinging. It's like a game of, uh, I've called this pod a Bomoyang whack-a-mole because as soon as Bomoyang goes up there, fixes the situation, scores a goal, looks behind him, oh no, whack-a-mole. So he quickly runs up, gets another goal, think, oh, we're okay again, looks behind him, we've never loved a goal in. So the whole time is a Bomoyang whack-a-mole, poor bloke running around trying to keep things going. When I was just looking at a Bomoyang stats, 37 league goals in 54 games, and that's, this has been three of the worst seasons that we've had in, in, in living memory, but... Yeah, to answer your question, rather than dribbling on all the time, looking in back in retrospect, I would have brought on Chambers and Taraya and and shored up that defence because they were looking shaky. I have to agree. Took you. Twenty minutes to get to the point. That's brilliant. Yeah, you, you definitely carpentered that up. Um, I I would have to agree with you, Danny. I don't understand. Don't start that. There's no need to start that agreement. But I mean, if I'll you carry on longer next time, you saw as well as everyone else saw, how much pressure we was under. Now, surely you're going to go and show up the defence or make the midfield more solid. And he brings in an attacking player. I, I, I 
for one, just don't get that whatsoever. And this is why, and we're going to talk about the manager after we just clear up the game, but um, he's meant to be this tactical genius, this tactical person that, you know, can see it. Now, if I can see it and you can see it and Jason can see it and Femi can see it, why can't he see it? Why? I mean, yes, you can uh, go on and say attack is the best form of defence, but not in our case because literally we just didn't do anything. I, 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 don't, I don't get it. And then... Uh, so they were attacking us and attacking us and attacking us. And then Femi, talk us through Mr. David Luiz. Oh man, I, I want to like this. I, I actually really want to like this this player. Yeah, like, me too. I really want to like him. Like, but uh, I just don't get it. I don't get it. Maybe it's. I want to say maybe it's because we're not protecting him. Um, that's that's actually I would say that actually our defense is getting no protection. Like how Watford, I read the thing had forty eight touches in our box more than any team this season in an opposition box, and I think we had the second most when we played against Liverpool as well. So what is that means our defense is constantly under pressure, and if we've got players like David Luiz, he's probably never been under this much stress in his whole football career to be honest with you he can't he must can't believe that you know and if David Luiz is under pressure we've seen it before for Brazil he will make mistakes remember that Germany Brazil game what mm-hmm. happened there that always whenever I think of David Luiz I always think of that game if they are if he's under pressure he just makes mistake after mistake but giving away penalties like one of the if we want to play that like Man City, one of the things we should learn from Man City is tactical fouling. Foul up the pitch, foul out. That that goal started from their box. Torreira went up and and had a shot, if you remember, and the keeper saved it, and they broke from there. He was fouling right wing, wasn't he? I mean, what the fuck yeah. is he doing at right wing? Then well, people, another... well, this is the problem because of the formation that we're playing. We've got players that are holding midfielders or or should be sitting, you know, bombing forward at the wrong times. You know, Xhaka's, Xhaka in a two in midfield is, you know, just about acceptable. But playing him as a one in midfield, you're just asking for trouble. So they've broken. We've decided we're not going to foul up the pitch. We're not going to, you know, usher players out. We just keep back. You notice that as well, that our players keep backing and backing. If you keep backing, guess what's going to happen? Your The next foul that you're going to make is in the box. And it was coming. It was coming. It, someone said, actually, uh, when they equalised, they said, we better get another one because we're, we're going to give away a penalty soon anyway. So we might as well just try and score another one. And that's exactly what happened. And um, as for the penalty itself, I, I want to know what our goalkeepers do in training. They must be the worst. <laughs> like our keepers don't even go the right way anymore for penalties. We had the situation with Czech never saving penalties, and now we've got Leno. He doesn't. He doesn't even go. The, I can't remember the last time it went the right way, but uh, it is what it is. Yeah, um, I'll ask everyone here: Was it a penalty, uh, Femi? I stick with you. Do you think it was a penalty? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Jason, uh, was it a penalty? All day long. Uh, I, off- admit, I thought the referee refereed the game really well. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you, definitely. Uh Danny, is it a full house? Was it a penalty? Yes. Oh, you didn't carbon it up. So <laughs> after that, I'm gonna cover myself up now for that last <laughs> half hour. Right. 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 So, sorry, Carl. One of the things we gotta remember, as Femi said, okay, you look how much pressure those centre halves are on under. Okay. He's he's asking for all his width from the full backs. So they're constantly at the park. Right? Huh? You've got no coverage. I mean, one of the things Gwen Doozy, Gwen Doozy gave a really good interview um a couple of weeks ago. And I thought he was very honest. And, and it's what I like about him. And he spoke about, you know, he's still learning um positionally to be um, disciplined, things like that. Because, you know, because of his character. You know, he's about the place a lot. To play the game that Emery wants, you need two disciplined holding midfielders to cover the, the full backs when they're gone, to cover the centre backs, to screen them. 
we don't offer our centre backs any protection, and it's human nature to grab out or to to make that last ditch defence um, thing. And as Femi said, the okay, you know, you look at them backing off. You just go back to the Liverpool game and look at the way we never put pressure on the ball. We're inviting them on us constantly, and sooner or later you've got to make a stand, and that is in our box half the time. This is not, you know, I'm not blaming David Louise for that. I'm, I'm not. You, you can't invite that much pressure on, and it's a tactical decision to do that. You can't invite that much pressure without making mistakes. It's as simple as that. You've got to have discipline in midfield, and, and you know, you've got to offer those centre-backs some sort of protection. We don't do it. But it's not like we don't have the players for it because we do. We have uh, Torreira, who I'm assuming he was built for that sort of yeah. thing to do. And he, he's not playing. So we don't know if he's fully fit or not. But I will go with the eight old adages. If you're not fully fit to play, then you shouldn't be on the bench. But, but I, you're whether, fit or you're not. whether he's fully fit or not, it doesn't really matter because the manager is not playing him where he's best seated. So it doesn't matter if he's fully fit or not. We're not seeing him in front of the back two. You know, we're not seeing him in that position where he screens really well. He can see danger. Steve used to say this. He watched him play for um, uh, for uh, Uruguay. He sees danger coming. He gets in a position. He cuts the ball out. Okay. Uh, at the moment, you know, you, you saw against the scam, he's played out a position. Okay. He wasn't put in front of the, the two centre-backs on, on Sunday either. You know, you can play eight centre-backs at the moment. They're still going to make mistakes. They're not getting any fucking coverage. And that's down to one man. It is. Uh, oh. Then it gets... Um, our mate Steph has just put in here, when are our strikers allowed to run at the opposition centre-backs? That's something I meant to say that I, until he's put it there, I completely forgot. Every single time it, it, during that game, there was no width on the left. It all went down the right hand. It built up on the bottom on the left hand from um, Klasnic, then went across midfield. Then it was given to Pepe. Pepe was running in and either him or Maitland-Niles was crossing it. There was nothing coming from the left. There was everything coming from the right and nothing going through the middle like Steph has put there. What the hell are they doing? When you, If you're a central defender or any kind of defender, you see a bomber young running at you at 900 mile an hour or even Pepe. Those two running at you, even when you had the chances, they weren't doing it. It was seemed every time, go out to the right, go out to the right. Meanwhile, on our left, that's where um, Delafoyu was was tearing a Ashley Maitland-Niles, a new one, every single time. And that's not the first time this season we have seen two teams attack Ash Ains uh, Maitland-Niles. Oh, I can't remember which is the right one now. Attacking him down that, that our right hand side, their left hand side. They keep doing it because they know he's not a proper, uh, he's not a, a right back. Although he has had, I think, one really good game this season. But they, they, it's going to keep on doing it. So that's, a, that's a good point from Steph. Why are we not getting? You would never say to, to Henri in the day or, or right or Bergkamp, sorry, no, wings only, nothing through the middle. It's ridiculous. Uh, you know when we bought Pepe in the summer, did, did, didn't everyone say, oh, we've been crying out for a, a, a natural wide player? Who's <laughs> yeah, gonna... really. And then we bought him and he's played up front more than he's played out wide. And it's like, we were screaming for a creative wide player, and we've just changed this. Just like you're saying with Torreira, Jason, what? Why? Why? Why do that? What's the point? You're just you're basically weakening players by taking away their strengths. Do, do you know what gets me? Okay, I was watching the game on Sunday. And I just thought, thank God I'm not doing the live show. There's one point in the first half where you look at a Pepe, and he and he must be thinking, "What the fuck have I done? Why have I come here?" <laughs> You know, I, 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 you know, we seem sometimes people try to be too fucking clever and they're not as bright as they think they are. And when I look at the Unai Emery setup, and I thought this last season, even when we're on the 22 match unbeaten run with the performances against Fulham and Cardiff, okay, I, I, and when you dared to question him last season, there were a bunch of know it all twats giving you grief, okay? And it's just coming out to fruition again. I know. He's not, as you say, if you're not going to set up, taking into account the strengths of your players and their best abilities and where, you know, giving them the ability to flourish and perform, 
What do you expect? What do you expect? Isn't it the you, square pegs round hole sort of thing that we used to yeah. blame Arson for? You could fucking buy Ronaldo and Lionel Messi. He played them at fucking full back and sent it off. <laughs> All right, I'm going to wrap the Watford game up now. We know that Watford had a chance at the very end to win it with um, Decore, wasn't it? Uh, running through on goal. The counter-attack for me, I kind of, at that point, <laughs> I was so just pissed off. I kind of wanted Watford to score just to sh show how shit we actually was. Like, I never want Arsenal to lose, don't get it wrong, but how our defence got opened up so much, it was just unreal. And I don't understand, but it happened uh, full time, uh, and that was it. So I'll, we start talking about individuals now. Right, so Jay, can I can I ask you a few questions? Go ahead. Not with you, Carl. Do you think we deserved to draw that game? No, we should have lost. Hundred percent, we should have lost that game. Fem. We should have definitely lost that game. Danny, it's a no from me. <laughs> honest to God, okay. I gotta be honest with you. It's fucking embarrassing taking the point from that game. Sorry, Carl. Back to you. Yeah, you're you're definitely right, and we'll talk on individuals, I guess. And everyone here, I guess, has seen the um, the stat that's come out um, about our shots faced uh, for the this season, and I'll read them out to you if you haven't. So, at Newcastle we faced nine shots and we um, had eight shots on their goal. Uh, at Burnley, we had 15 shots at Burnley at home and we had 18 against us. We was at home, by the way, Burnley. Um, at Liverpool, we had 25 shots against us, 25 and eight, four. So we peppered their goal eight times. And at Watford, it was uh, 31. 31 shots and let me say this again Watford have lost three games this season it's not a personal thing it can't be but surely when you see something like that and you see the stats going around we have had the most shots faced in the whole of Europe of the top five leagues no other team in any European league has had more shots faced against us now we've gone into it and talked about the the, um, having no protection in the midfield. Now, everyone says that, you know, Unai Emre is, you know, he's he's very tactical. He, you know, walks, he was, when you see him in the training clips, he's always got his clipboard in his hand and things like that. So, surely, if the rumour goes around that meant to, he's meant to uh, show players like a DVD of their performances after every game. So, for me, if you get to the Burnley game and you're at home and you say, why did we concede 18 shots on goal to 15? Then you get to the Liverpool game and you think to yourself, why did we concede 25 shots? I mean, yeah, you could say it's Liverpool, but that's just by the by. Surely when you get to Watford, the fact that we conceded more shots on our goal than we did against Liverpool, the league leaders, to the bottom club, it roots that something is not right. And you could say it's the players, you could say it's the manager. For me, and I don't want to do the blame game now because we, you, you could ask all four of us and all four of us could have four different opinions. But for me, he's the manager because he's the one that sets out the tactics, sets out the stores, sets out the, he's the one that tells the players what to do. How do you fix this, Danny? Tell me how you fix the fact that we are getting our goal absolutely peppered and the bottom team has had the most shots on goal against us this season. You start by uh, leaving Leno in goal. You get Bellerin playing at right back who can go forward and defend. Uh, Tierney, defend and, and keep back and, and attack. You say to you, no more playing it to the defender in the centre of the box. You If you want to, you play it short to Louise. But you say to Louise, I'm going to give you the ball this time and you're going to ping it up midfield. Like what Liverpool do with the two centre-backs where they get the ball and they launch it up midfield. They, they do that so often. And then you say, Socrates... Don't 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 kick anybody. Don't touch anything. Just stand there and look pretty. And then you say, right, Taraya, you are sitting in front of the back two. Ajaka, you are staying in the middle of the field. And if Taraya goes out, you go back. If someone comes running at us, you two 
one to try and shepherd them in so then the defenders can get to them. At no point, to, uh, Xhaka, are you having a shot on goal for the rest of your Arsenal career? They don't go in, bloody stop it. And then you two not going past the halfway line. I don't like it when we see, when we're making an attack, everybody apart from Leno and Maitland-Niles has gone forward. Why do you want Maitland-Niles as, as the last man back? He's nearly always him. You don't want that. You want somebody who can defend. And so those two, Traya and Jacker, don't leave our half. You're not doing it. And then Ceballos, you do what Ramsey used to do. You come back, you get the ball, you run forward with the ball, you pass it around. And let's try a few different things. Let's try running at them with the ball. Let's try bringing stuff in from the left and from the right and play people in the same positions. We've had this un, un, in the Wenger era. So many players are playing in the wrong positions, whether it's from necessity because we've had players injured and they have to play in those positions, or whether it's because the players are undisciplined. I'm sure that um, Emery doesn't go out there and go to Louise and, and Papi. Go on, kick her if you want. doesn't really matter. Because the amount of 10 penalties that we've given away since the beginning of last season, which is more than any team, 15 errors that have led to goals. Now, I'm not Emery out by any chance. And I've written, I've been listening to a lot of podcasts in the last, I listened to six podcasts and I've been making notes to, to try and counteract the points that they've made. And if Carl lets me, I might read it later. But I'm not Emery out at all. I am players, do as you're fucking told. And don't always have to listen to the manager. Leno, you're, you're a magnificent goalkeeper. You've made your way back into the German national team. You did this when at your last club. You need to say to people, look, we're not going to have to do this every time because they all know it doesn't work. And But they, they, they just keep doing it. So people stick to your positions and stop roaming forward. Like Femi was saying, we had Terraria playing right wing and then having shots from there. And then that, at that point, they went, whoa, here we go. He's up there. Let's all run down midfield. And then tippy-tappy, they scored. It's all over from the... They got the penalty. You're right, Danny. And for me, Femi, I'd ask you this question. So you see a player playing a different league, let's say Pepe. You know, you see me, what he does in the position that he plays in France. I know it's a feeders league, but, you know, uh, you see that. For me... You bring him over here, and then you tell him to play in a different position. Like, how? What sense does that make? It's, it, it, it does go back to the square peg, round holes, uh, sort of thing. Same with uh, Xhaka. I remember when we bought him, John was raving about him. Oh, we can do this in the midfield, do that in the midfield. But we haven't seen any of the qualities that he used to do in the um, Bundesliga. So why is it that when players come to Arsenal, they play so differently? It's same with Torreira. Like when he was playing in. Um, Syria, you know, he was, didn't he have like the most tackles won in the whole league the season that uh, we bought him? He comes over here and he's not the same player. Why is it so different? Uh, you know what? For, I don't think football is a complicated game, to be honest with you. And I think people make it complicated. So I think there's some things that just overcomplicate things. So for example, you know that you've got players that can only play a certain way or you bought them based on certain strengths, okay? So I'm sure a lot of um, scouting now is probably data and things like that. So you know which formation they've played in, uh, where they've played in those formations. So, for example, Torreira did play in a diamond in Sampdoria, but he played at the base of a diamond. So if you bring him here... Or let's say, for example, you bring Kante to Arsenal and then you ask him to play where you've asked Torreira to play. Imagine the uproar, like what Chelsea saw last season. It's just simple things that that can destroy a whole player's confidence. And once a player's confidence is gone, then you've got a bigger problem on your hands. We've got to be careful with this Pepe situation. Um, on Saturday was the first time I thought he just, he looked totally lost as a player. And that's five games into his career. I, I get, you know, I give him time. I don't really blame him at the moment. You know, he needs to adapt to the league, but he looked shell shot at one point. I think he might have been one of the players that was like, what is this? Because I remember Sabayas gave an interview last week uh, to Sid Lowe, I think, and he was talking about the atmosphere at Anfield and he's never experienced anything like what Liverpool did. So now he's probably thinking two away games and to, he must think Watford are, are as good as Liverpool <laughs> after Saturday, and we just can't we can't be in a situation where where our players are so frightened to even receive. That's we got to the point where players were scared to receive the ball, and it's because you're just fiddling around with it too much. If you fiddle too much, football is a simple game. You know, Xhaka's good at certain things, so protect Xhaka. If you've got Xhaka at 
at one point in that game, I swear it was like we had no one in midfield. Xhaka was up front at one point, um, messing up control of the ball. If he he can't get back, you know, pit players were just running here, there, and everywhere. I've never, I've actually never seen anything like that before. To be honest with you, that last five minutes of that game was just was ridiculous. I have to agree, Jason. You've been watching Arsenal for a long time. I'm not saying you're old. You're not as old as Danny, but you know, you're getting on in life. Would you say that was? the worst half of football you've seen in the time you've been watching Arsenal? Any more grief of you, and I'll make sure your trains run on time. Okay? <laughs> I know. I'll sort out the underground. <laughs> look, look I, I, I look at this, okay? If I'm, Unai, if, if I'm um, Ed with the moment, I sit when I am read down watch the four game the the five league games we played one after the other and ask him what is he trying to achieve what's the thinking behind the setups what's the thinking behind changing formation all the time you know why why is he what are the reasons behind the decisions he's made and then ask him to say it's to point out where it's gone well and where it's gone badly and just go through you know, it it, it it play by play with him. Because unless the manager realises what's going wrong here, okay, you've got no hope. People talk about Granit Xhaka, you can talk about him all you want. I've seen Granit Xhaka in a cup final against the best team in the land dominate the best midfield, okay, of that season when we played Chelsea in the FA Cup final. Because he had the right partner alongside him. They suited each other. You had three at the back, okay? You had your width from your full backs, but you had the right pair in midfield, and they fucking destroyed Chelsea that day. They absolutely dominated them, like they did away last season, uh, at home against Chelsea last season, okay? Football's a game of partnerships. I don't get, you know, the way he's using Ceballos. I don't get the way he's using... Um, Torreira, I don't get the uh, the way he's he's using Guendouzi. You know, you've got a lot of fine players in that side, okay. But if you're not given the opportunity to flourish, then you know you 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 can just play five side or in no goalies. It doesn't really matter, you know. Somebody has to take Unai to one side and say, right, Unai, what's the objective? What's the reasoning behind these decisions? What are you trying to achieve? What do you think you've achieved? And where do you think you've gone wrong? Because at this moment in time, there's not an awful lot going right. The first display of the season against Newcastle was a good display. It was a good win. It's a good away point. No goals conceded. The Burnley game, you, you saw people salivating over what was, to be honest with you, I only saw the first half hour. It was bang average. It was bang average. Then the excuses came out after the Liverpool game. Oh, it's Liverpool. Well, you just invited so much pressure on yourself. It doesn't matter if Pepe scores. It doesn't matter if Aubameyang scores. We're going to lose. You can't You can't hold back the river. You can't. Okay? The Tottenham game, well, you know, okay, you can talk about individual errors, but, you know, I thought these teams were crap. I thought this was a crap team in trouble and we were going to smash them. I was everybody's telling me, didn't do that. We got, you know, we could have won it. We could also have lost that game. But Sunday, you know, you, you can't invite all that pressure on yourself and expect to get out the dodge with a win. You just can't. How, he's, how he has to solve it, he has to get his team around him. He has to be totally honest with it about himself and his players. You've got to start forming partnerships. We got to get some sort of identity to this team, so you're putting players in the right position. To think playing Jacques as a quarterback DM, DM type player doesn't work. Okay, you need somebody with legs alongside him. When Doozy's not disciplined enough, he's a great talent. I'm really looking forward to him to seeing him develop. Okay, but you know you you have to have to have to. Stop fucking about so much of this team and stop inviting such pressure on yourself. 
It just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. You know, you, you, you're looking at two players in Lacazette and Aubameyang. Why do they want to be here? Pepe's thinking, what have I done? You know, Tierney's thinking, oh, do you expect me to defend and give you all the width? I ain't out, man. You can't be in two places at once. It's physically impossible. So, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things to, to, to sort out there. But they, unless they sit down, analyse the tape properly, and don't see what they just want to see, look at it honestly, there's no good positive change going to come. I find it fascinating, though, that you're talking about partnerships. Remember last season, we had an issue in defence, right? Yeah. What did Emery think was the best way to plug that? By sticking an extra defender in, right? So we, yeah. had, we just had three clowns instead of two at that point. Now, he seems intent on playing four at the back. Fair enough. That's what he, he's, he seems wedded to that. So now what he thinks, we've got a problem in midfield, right? So what he's doing now is he's just adding an extra midfielder in there, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. But then all that's doing is it's just making things worse because everyone is now... Sometimes you don't even know what formation we're playing, to be honest with you, because the midfield are just all over the place. That's the thing. You, you, you know, you, you've got a young talent in Gwendouzi, okay, who's, you know, I, I rate this kid. I thought he was brilliant in Spurs. Certainly not one of the greatest fucking NLD performances I've ever seen, not by a long shot, but he was brilliant. He was man of the match for me, okay? But he's got to be disciplined. When you're, you, you know, when, when you're without the ball... You have to fall back into defensive shape. Well, we don't do that because nobody knows where they, they're supposed to be. Everybody is all over the place, aren't they? And, you know, you, you look at, you know, season before last in um, uh, our Sens last game, you saw Holding and Chambers, they've played age-grade football for England together. When they play together at centre-back, they looked OK. They're young. We know they're going to make mistakes, but they looked... They looked promising, you know. If you, if, you know, you, if you see Jacques and Ramsey last season, okay, together they look good together. We were winning games because they understand each other. Ramsey's got the legs. Jacques knows where to find people to open up space, to, so that there's um, space to move into for players. You know, you have gotta keep the ball. You gotta keep the ball, and we, you know, we haven't got pass and move midfielders at the moment. Um, you know, Xhaka is what he is. Torreira is what he is. When Doozy, you know, he's, he's he's not got electrifying pace or anything. He's you know he's got lots sort of j languid jogging style. Mezet, it's his first game back. You know, there's no point in sort of looking at that at the moment. But you know, we buy a wide player, and what we do with him, we play him top. I just find it. I find it fascinating that he. He thinks any of this is a good idea. Danny, what do you think is missing from this midfield? I mean, we've got Sabayos, who's a good technical player. We've got Guendouzi, he will run and run. We have Ozil, who is a great passer <laughs> from the ball. Do you think we're missing a bit of um, pace and power from our midfield? Um, I think we're missing a bit of creativity, a little bit of, um, uh, what's it when you behave yourself? Rigidity. Um, someone in there going, oi, you, Gwen Doozy, stop running around like a blue ass fly. Get back there and have a little bit of discipline in your position. Um, positional discipline would be, a, I suppose, a proper, a better word. When um, Taraya goes to run up midfield, put your arm around and go, oi, sweetheart, back there, do your fucking job. Xhaka, whack around the head. Stop fucking shooting from the halfway line. They're not going in. Uh, and um, go up to Pappy and go, look, look, I know you're a murderer, right? But save that shit for off the pitch nonsense. We don't want any of it. And then get get Gwenduzi and Tere and, and uh, Louise, tie their hair together and go, right, until you two learn to fucking behave yourselves, this is going to happen every game. We're going to shave your head. One of you is going to get your head shaved. If you two as a pair don't sort it out. So many, the only ones, like someone to put in here, the only players this season that have looked good for us has been Laka, Lacazette and Aubameyang. I, I'd say Leno has saved us quite a few times. For, we've only lost one game all season, but it's the, the, the way that we've let the goals in, the way we've let the shots in. It's almost as if uh, it's, it's like watching our, our Simon uh, Collins do a bit of paintball. He comes back covered in welts. He, he may not have lost the game, but bloody hell, he doesn't look good. <laughs> Yeah, I have to agree. I think 
I don't want to go too mad because it's we're only five games into the season and we didn't lose the game. Yeah, it feels like a defeat. You know, being 2-0 up away from home, you'd think that you'd go out to see the game out, but um, we didn't win the game. I'm trying to look for positives in this game and the only positive I can think of is Aubameyang. I, I, I think everyone here would agree that apart from Aubameyang, there is no other positives uh, throughout the I game. Thought, but, I thought Leno had a... Oh, and Leno, yeah I, I, yeah, I tend to agree. But if your goalkeeper's having a good game, then <laughs> do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm going to counteract that and say, if your goalkeeper's having a good game, then obviously that means that your defence is not having a good game. But we're going to improve. We have to improve. And if we don't, then obviously some serious questions need to be... Um... So, sorry, Carl, question for you. If you take the our form from the back end of last season, add it to what we've seen this season... What evidence do you see that we're going to improve? Or is it just a case of we can't get any worse? We can get worse. Of course we can, because we can start losing games. We Like um, Danny said, we've only lost one game this season. And yeah, this season is very young. And you're right. If you look at the way we finished last season and the beginning of this season, it, it doesn't look for good reading. We Before you came to this um, chat, um, Jason, when you was very late, um, we um, <laughs> we were talking about um, if at March we get knocked out of the Europa and we are, say, fifth in the league, do you get rid of Emre then or do you wait to the end of the season? Because there's no way he, he gets another season uh, under in that form. So I'll ask a question to you, Jason. So in March, we get knocked out of the Europa in the quarterfinals, let's say. And um, we're fifth in the league, and let's say we're, I don't know, let's say, be realistic, 15 points off the uh, off first place. And we we'll say, I don't know, eight points off getting fourth. Do you get rid of Emre then, or do you keep him to the end of the season? I just sacked him last season, you know that. Okay, mm-hmm. I was quite clear about it. I just sacked him at the end of last season. Um, That's how I feel about him. I, You know, the, the problem you've got is, Regardless of, you know, I've heard people laughing at Chelsea and United all season so far. I know we're only five games in, but they're laughing at them, calling them a car crash. And yet we're on the same amount of points as them. Um, Those are two clubs in difficult positions and we are in exactly the same place. I, I, You know, you've got to give it Unai a chance. You know, they've, you know he's, they've kept him on for the season. So I think you have to give him the opportunity to improve on, on last season. But the big thing for me, and we spoke about it, I don't know how many times in the radio show last season, even during the 22 match and beaten run, when the performance is going to get better. Because unless you've got a solid base of good performances from with it, which to build upon, then it doesn't matter what he's going to do. It's always going to be from one week to the next. I've heard Unai described as pragmatic, a tactically astute manager. Pragmatic, tactically astute managers don't let in 51 league goals in a season. They don't allow 96 shots on themselves, okay? He has to find a way of getting the right balance in his team and building performances. Now, it's going to take a bit of time from where we're at on from Sunday's game. But he has to start here and now. But how much time do you give him? That, we, we, we're talking about a results-based industry, okay? If he panics and starts overplaying Aubameyang whilst Lacazette is out, okay? If Aubameyang gets injured, he's screwed either way. 100%. Because you're not getting goals from this midfield. I've heard, you know, I've heard some actor nonsense spoken about these players overrating them or hammering them too hard. They, they you know, even Socrates, he's a good, solid pro. He's not my favourite player, but to be fair to the guy, he's a good, solid pro, international, all these things. Unai has to find a way of gelling the team together in good partnerships from within to which, from with which to build good performances, okay? He ha- he can't be scared of snubbing players at certain times. Why play Sabayas and Ozil at the same time? It, it doesn't make sense to me. 
you need a bit of craft and you need a bit of industry. You know, um, people shouldn't be expecting too much from Willock and Nelson. These are young kids. These are young kids. These are long-term projects, as is Gwen Do you know what I mean? You know, we have to be building performance week on week. And that means he's set in the tempo. He's dictating the game. He's, right, I don't care what opp opposition's going to be. We're going with such formation today. You know, get formation A right. Then look at formation B. You get plan A right, build upon it. Then you work on plan B. And that's the only way to do it because, it, you know, you, can, you, you can't chop and change each week. It doesn't fucking work. It's never fucking worked. You don't fucking win anything with it. And for people telling me he's got a fucking master plan, you're full of fucking shit. So, Danny, <laughs> what I would say to you is before the next international break, we have Frankfurt, Villa, Forest, Man United, Standard the Age, and Bournemouth. Let's say between now and then we we got to the Frankfurt game, but let's just say we lose to Frankfurt, we beat Villa at home, we beat Forest in the cup, we lose to Man United away, we beat Standard, but we lose to Bournemouth at home. During the international break, do you think that the M Ray discussion again pops up? Yes. Yeah, it will do. It's not going to stop because uh, like Leon Davis has just put there Tinker Man. I said a few times this season he's Tinker Man version two because that's what he does. He likes to tinker. You see him sat, stood on the sideline thinking, rubbing his nose, picking his cheek or his tongue or whatever it is he does, looking like he should be bleeding medicated because he's having a bit of a turn, the poor bloke. Uh, and you've got now, you've got a whole campaign that are, that are against him. There's some big accounts out there going, that's it, he needs to go. Now, whether they're doing it, because they 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 want the attention because there's a bandwagon now, or whether they're doing it because they genuinely feel it. But you, I don't think any of them are, um, were saying they want. Uh, I need to finger out then. Oh Jesus, that shows where we are, doesn't it? I think I don't think any of them are saying Emery out because it's what's best for the club. I think it's what's best for their agenda, which is um, well that list I was telling you about um, that I've uh, tried to make con um, um, uh, opposite points of what what they were making. Yeah, go for it now. Say huh? it now. Go for it now. All right, that, that. boys so, and girls. Do you, uh, mind, oh. mind if I just jump in quickly? What if I did just, mind? I, well, I was going to do it anyway. Well, there you go. Why bother asking me? Because <laughs> I'm trying to be polite. What? <laughs> no, sorry. Don't. Oh, stuff is bad. Yeah, people get the wrong idea. <laughs> I've got all soft. Yeah. <laughs> the the one thing we saw at the end of Anger's reign was, um, uh, you know, uh, Twitter campaigns, etc. Um, there was there was one big one where they were they were going to do something during the game. Twitter bears no relation to the stadium. Giles um, put a tweet out today, um, uh, you know, talking about the feel inside the stadium as to think. It, it, it's a couple of poor performances. You know, people can talk about wanting them in or out all they want. We have no control over that. Surely the aim must be, you know for him to improve performance in the team rather than start a sort of another witch hunt. You know, we've had it against Mustafi. It's now on Xhaka. We, we don't need it. You know, you, you, you've you got to point out the truth of what's happening. But, you know, fucking scapegoating the guy as well, you know, just because somebody's got 30,000 Twitter followers, oh, do just fuck off and stop boring me. You know? Uh, like, you're right, Jason. People tend to... It's almost like attention seeking, you know. Yeah. They jump on a, whatever the bandwagon is, whatever the the flavor of the month is. That's what they're going to do. Like I said, when uh, it was Wenger's turn, they were jumping on Wenger. Last season it was Mustafi, they're jumping on Mustafi. Uh, beginning of the season it was Jaka, and now they turn their attention to the manager. We're never going to be perfect. This is Arsenal Football Club. We we haven't been perfect for a very long time, and whatever it is, it's going to take time. No one's saying you can't have an opinion. You can go on Twitter. That's what Twitter's for. That's why we yeah. live in a society that we can have free speech. And you can say whatever you want. You, you, you can within reason. But, you know, if you have an opinion about something, go ahead and say it. 
sometimes people need to think about what they say first. And if after five games you're writing someone off, and yeah, you can talk about it towards the end of the last season as well. Yeah, no one's forgiven him for the cup final. No one's forgiven him about for losing three nil to Palace, three nil to Wolves, and one nil to Everton. No one's no one's the forgot that. Game. Pardon? The Leicester game as well. Yeah, no one's no one's forgotten that. However, like Danny, new season, clean slate. Yeah. You've got to forgive him. He's brought in some players and these players need time to adjust. Like Femi said, he's just come in Pepe and he needs time to adjust. Yeah, he's come from a league where Danny, Jason and I could play up front in the, the Farmers League and we could probably get 60 goals between us. But he's come into a league where we have proper players this time. You know, it's not just one a one-team league. Like we've come, He's come to a league where players, teams like Watford could you know, dominate us. So you need to give him time. Um, I don't want the Pepe um, talk to start. No way. I mean, yeah, if you look at, if at Christmas, he's got like one goal, one assist, then maybe you can start thinking, hmm, what's going on there? But it's too early now. Like, you can't expect him just to hit the ground running. No one does that. No one in sort of football does that. So, for me, give everyone needs a bit of time. You have to give people time. Yeah, at Christmas, if we're in a precarious position, by all means, start this debate again, start this conversation again, and then we can start talking about it and thinking, you know, is Unai Emre the right man for the job? I have my opinions. I personally don't think he is, but, you know, like Jason said, you have to give him time. And unfortunately, this game and this league is an unforgiving league and time is not always on people's hands. It's not people uh, want you here and now. I don't see them sacking him during the season, purely financial reasons, probably, because think about his coaching staff alone. He's got a lot of coaches at Arsenal Football Club. It would cost them a lot of money. What's the, if they've got a break clause in at the end of the season, I just don't see them put, pulling the trigger during the season unless things got really, really bad. But remember, he's, I just don't see it. His contract ends at the end of the season, doesn't it? So yeah, yeah it obviously does, the, the I'm left... sure within that ending at the end of the season, they've got a one year option, haven't they? So there probably is something written into the contract that you'll still get paid a certain amount of money. Like Arsene Wenger got paid for a year after he left. You know, they, they'll they'll it won't be a total break. I don't think any manager would, would still have to pay some compensation. So we've got to be careful with that as well. Yeah, I mean, Arsene I think the thing is, contract. Yeah, I think the thing is, you know. <laughs> We look at it, we, we offer opinion on the radio show, on, on the live show after every game. It's just opinion. We don't start a witch hunt or anything. That's the one thing we don't do, you know. We offer our opinion, we tell it exactly the way we see it, we be honest about it, but don't start the witch hunt. Danny, sorry I interrupted you. Carry on, winter is coming. I do apologize. <laughs> uh, there's a new YouTube, newish new YouTube channel called The Arsenal Realist. Now I'm putting his, his link in there, people. So go go and have a look at that later. Oh, Rob's J Rob's giving us some money. Anyway, so go and have a look at that Arsenal's realist. He is brilliant. Uh, um, some of it's tongue in cheek, but some of it he makes some really good points. Anyway, J Rob has given us a couple of euros. He says, uh, well, chaps, just in from work. I'll rewatch later. Wouldn't bother. All we're doing this moaning. Right, so uh, this weekend I have listened to Arscast. I listened to uh, Mike and Andy. I listened to The Judge and Lee. I, I listened to Tom. I listened to Harry. I've listened to um, the, Ars Ars the Arsenal. I'll just put the bloody thing in here and I've forgotten it. Arsenal's Realist. I've listened to all of these people. So now that Jason's gone, I can get a word in edgeways. Right, so <laughs> some of the points. Feel free to jump in, Carl, and stop me because you're in charge here. Right, so <laughs> countering points to some of the stuff that we've said here and other stuff. I put, right, we have one of our back four fit. That's right. That's true. Uh, we are scoring enough but conceding too many. That's obvious. Uh, we, lo we, we lost four points from stupid penalties. How is that Emery's fault? He didn't tell them to foul them. So far, I can't argue with anything I've written here. We are on the same points at the moment as Spurs, Man United and Chelsea. That's not bad, is it? And now this one. City went to Norwich and lost 3-1. They spent a billion pound on players. Norwich's most expensive player is 1.5 million. Almost none of them have Premier League experience. City are back-to-back -back Premier League champions. They have some of the best players in the world. They're some of the highest paid players in the world and the, the highest paid manager in the world. City fans are not going mad. Imagine, not mad, going mad. Imagine if we went there and we lost 3-1. 
Uh, that, that, that they oh, I think it's bad drawing at Watford. We drew away to Watford, a team that beat us 2 1 two seasons ago under Wenger. We have one of the world's highest paid players, and although he didn't have a bad game, he wasn't great, nearly done. Be happy that we have defenders who defended like Spartans. I was struggling for a word there. And the only two goals they conceded from that 30 odd shots one was a penalty, one was a fuck up by Socrates. So the amount of defending they did was, when you look at it, it was pretty bloody good. Desperate. <laughs> and I think Watford are unlucky. But you put Liverpool and City are by far the best teams in the world. And we have the third uh, in the Premier League. And we are the, have the third most amount of points, which is pretty good. Chelsea have the world's most expensive goalkeeper in Mr. Unpronounceable. 72 million quid. And they have let in 11 goals in five games. We've only let in eight. And then the final one, uh, you watch Man City now. Really, um, news today. John Stones is out for a month. Laporte is out to... February and company has gone. You watch them struggle just like we've been struggling because um, Pepper said he's had to get some of the some of the kids to come in and and help take over. So, what do you think to those points? Um, me trying to be rational and counterpoint all the other that, stuff people have said. Okay, why is it that we always compare ourselves to the lowest thing? So, why do you not compare us when Man City win? Why is it you comparing us when Man City lose? Why is it you're comparing us to? The points, the fact that we got the same points as City, Liverpool, and Spurs. Why are you not comparing us to Liverpool? Why is it that every single time a comparison the same, the same bracket as us? But why? But why? So my my. But you're saying that. So one instance, you're saying that. Oh, Man City spent a bajillion pound, and we got the same points. And then you're going to say, oh, but um, they won the league last season, and I don't understand mm. that, but. You're comparing us when they lose. They've they've lost the game, and now it's like, oh, we're the same as Man City. Why are we not the same as Man City no, when they not, win? Not really what I was saying. I'm saying that how their fans are reacting to them losing three one away when we drew two two away. Yeah, but it's, com- it's confidence, Danny. It's confidence in the fact that we know that this is a blip for Man City. This this is the fact that we drew away to Watford is almost like the norm. <laughs> it really is. It's, it's it shit is. that happens all the time. So as Arsenal fans, like. I don't think anyone was surprised, unexpected, but not surprised at the fact that we drew to Watford. I think as soon as Watford got their second, their first goal, I think every single Arsenal uh, supporter knew we wasn't going to win that game. I can almost guarantee it because of the way we're playing. And we know that we capitulate. Man City don't capitulate. They, it's just something they do. Yeah, they have a blip and, you know, like every single team. No team is going to... I mean, I know Liverpool have started well when they finished last season well. Liverpool will lose a game this season. I have no doubt about that whatsoever. They're not going to be invincible. I'm telling you now, it's not going to happen. But if Man City didn't do it, was it last season or season before? Liverpool fucking ain't going to do it, that's for sure. Yeah. So, I, I, so this is the thing, though, okay, Red Oka. You know, people compare, you know, I hear people saying, oh, look at City and look at Chelsea. Well, last week, the same people were ripping the piss at the City and Chelsea, calling them an a, a car crash. And now it's okay because we get the same amount of points as them. Okay? You know, you, you, you can't flip-flop on the argument all the time. The only thing that matters when it comes to Arsenal Football Club and it comes to Unai Emery and it comes to these players is our performances on the pitch. And if you're looking at what we've put out on the pitch this season and telling me everything's hunky-dory, you're fucking lying or you don't know what the fuck you're looking at. Okay? You know, you, you, you we saw it at the end of last season. Well, we saw it all throughout last season. The lack of performance, the lack of quality in performance affects you long-term. Now, you know, people go on with master plans. People go on with all this nonsense. Unai's got to go for a style of fo- a couple of styles of football, get one right, then get the other. I say it time and time again. It's exactly the same as we were saying last season. Okay? As soon as it, you know, it was at Watford last season where our season fell apart. As soon as Rambo got injured, we fell to pieces. You, know? you can look at other clubs all you want. The only thing that you should have looked at, okay, if you look at Pep, if you look at Jurgen Klopp, from day one, when they got to those clubs, they put their plan into action. And they got everybody singing off the same hymn sheet. Everybody at the Arsenal is singing off different hymn sheets and don't know what they're doing. 
We don't shouldn't be looking at the clubs. Look at our problems in house, sort them out, and then we'll be okay. But comparing us to think, you know, thinking that holding is going to come back and be the savior of our back four, it's fucking nuts. Thinking that fucking as soon as Turney and Bloody Bellerin get back from injury, everything's going to be okay. You're fucking deluded. But it's going to help because they're no. defenders. These guys are going to need time to recover from fitness. It's not going to be a magic wand. The problem our back four is facing is from a lack of protection from the midfield. Hmm. Centre backs aren't going to just help that overnight. It's damn. You know we can look at other clubs all we want, mate. That doesn't affect the way we play. Yeah, it's their reaction to a, a bad loss and our reaction to a draw. And our fans are calling for the manager's head. Because that's because that's not the norm, <laughs> Danny. For Man City, yeah. it's not the norm for them to lose to Norwich. It is the norm for us to capitulate. It's the norm yeah. for us to be 2 new up and not be comfortable. I think Arsenal are the only team that I know that can be 2 new up. And you're still thinking, this team's got a, a chance here. Why is it that teams are not scared to play us? Do you remember back in the day when I think on re, when we had the Invincibles, and I'm, I'm harping on about way, way back in the day, but teams used to be scared to play us. We used to beat teams before we got into the football pitch. Now, teams are looking at us thinking, we've got a chance here. Two new up, and teams are still thinking, yeah, we can get our Arsenal here. That's ridiculous. We need to get the fear factor back. And until we start putting teams to the sword, now Watford were, uh, we were two new up at half time. If we had put four against them, teams would have looking at us thinking, oh, they're not, you know, Arsenal... You know, they're, they're not too bad. But why is it that Watford felt so comfortable that they thought, no, nah, we're 2 nil. It's only 2 nil. We've got a chance. That's really bad. Yeah, and I think you, you really got to look at it as this as well. Uh, I know we're comparing us, you know, to, to some certain things, but how many away games do we think we're going to win this season? How many away games do you go into on a Saturday, Friday evening, let's say, and think, "Oh, we're gonna, we're gonna do this. We're gonna win every single away game that we go to." I am petrified that, that we're gonna draw or we're gonna lose. I always think something's gonna go wrong here, and that's every that's every away game. I'm worried about going to Sheffield United in a few weeks on a Monday night. That's I'm worried about that rocking Sheffield United on a Monday night. You just saw what Norwich did. I'm worried about that. I'm worried about every... I'm thinking, are we going to win more than five away games this season? Honestly. But this is what I'm saying about the fear factor. You know, Sheffield Wednesday after the international break, and I don't think they're going to have many players uh, go away for the international break. They're going to be thinking, we can get Arsenal here. We can Because they're going to be spending the whole two weeks thinking, how do we get Arsenal? How do they play? You know, Sheffield United, big, strong players... We don't have any big, strong players, and they will get at us. And you're right. You're thinking it's a team that, you know, on paper, we should beat Sheffield United. On paper, we should kill them. But I can guarantee you, on that Monday, they're going to get us. And, you know, it's going to be one of the things that people are going to be thinking, you know, Sheffield United can actually beat us. And if they do, is anyone here going to be shocked? Is anyone here going to be thinking, oh, my God, I can't believe... You know that like, it was a shock that Norwich beat um, Man City. If Sheffield United beat us, is anyone going to be thinking exactly the shock? Everyone's going to be thinking, hmm, typical Arsenal, isn't it, really? Unfortunately. <laughs> right, yeah. Danny, we've been going for uh, almost an hour and a half. So let's get uh, listeners' questions out of the way and also Fives Forum. So you're going to answer questions, aren't you? All right, I'll start with you, Carl, because you've done such a wonderful job of hosting with half your teeth missing. Right, from Double D Ravoli, he says, uh, do you guys think, this is only for Carl, do you guys think someone in our training coaches needs to sit down with Pepe and fix his final past? We can't afford another Walcott, especially when we've just spent £72 million on him. That's uh, a good point. No, because in the Farmers League, he did it fine. So why is it that he can do it there, but he can't do it here? So I don't think that's the issue because... If there was a problem with his final pass in um, Liga, then we wouldn't have bought him. So we saw something in this, this potential there. It's just that at the moment, it's not coming off. And like I said, give it time. And I feel if around Christmas time, like I said, he's only got one goal and one assist, then I'll be thinking, hmm, what's going on there? But now nah, for me, I'm not worried at all because he's getting in the right positions and he's doing the right things. Yeah, you know, and I'm... Um... 
uh, when we were buying him in the summer, I heard a lot of stuff, a lot of pundits and people coming on. I think they said that um, who's the Leeds manager? Bielsa bought him for Lille, is it that he's playing for? Yeah. And he played him up front, and he struggled up front. Okay, that's what. And then they Bielsa left, and they brought in a new manager who put him straight on the wing, and he never looked back since then. I remember. Um, Jose Fonte came on Talk Sport and he said he's the most talented player that he's ever worked with. So there's something there, but we just need to put him in the position we bought him for and let him play. Simple as that. Agreed. I think he could be the least of our, our worries at the moment because he's doing the job and some of the stuff he does, those magic feet, it's like he's playing at um, beach football. So it's, a, it's a beautiful thing to see. Right, question for you, Jace. Are you listening? Oh, I am. Okay. Uh, from Josh Robinson, 87, I don't think the defence is the biggest problem. It's protection from the midfield that is missing. How can Emery solve this problem? Remember, these people have sent me the questions before the pod. Yeah. So we might have covered it already. We have covered it. He's got to find a midfield setup that works, okay? He needs to get up in support of the attacking players and yet have coverage. You need a B to B for that. Can Ceballos do it? I'm not sure, but you're going to have to give him a go at some point. Um, maybe in the set of a 4 3 3, you know, a, a, a Liverpool two holding and then one at the tip of the um, uh, of the triangle. But, you know, that's why he gets paid millions of pounds a year. He's got to sort it out. But I think, you know, I, I like 4 2 3 1 because I think, you know, the four two three one turns into a four three three at certain times, but you've got to have the right guy for the right games. But you've got to get a good partnership in the two. And you know, I, I, I look. I think Gwen Doozy from the summer, I, you can see improvements in his game. They're tangible. They're there, but the discipline is going to take a little bit longer. He's got that exuberance of youth. Um. So you know, I'd look at maybe Xhaka. Torreira together, you've got passing range, and you've got somebody with that defensive nous who's able to scan alongside. And, you know, maybe look at Europa for partnering Torreira and Willock, or do you know what I mean? You know, you, you've got to develop them properly, the right games for the right players. Fair enough. I forgot I could do this. I can now cut and paste people's Twitter questions into here. So that's for you, Femi. Uh, Alonso Spencer says, why does Emery have to start Pappy and Louise together knowing that their trouble, the trouble they've caused in previous matches? Um, if you look at Emery, it looks like he's a type of manager that reverts to experience when he sees trouble. Okay, so who's your two, two most experienced players? Is those two. Um, I just don't see a way you're not gonna let's be honest we're not gonna drop david Luiz at this point are we i mean we brought him in you know it would t I, I don't know what he he would have to do to get dropped it would be pretty disastrous because i mean he left chelsea because he wasn't going to be a starter so for him to come to arsenal and then get dropped that would be a bit of an issue so you're only looking at um socrates to get dropped and Callum Chambers, I mean, it sounds good. It looks, it looked good in the first game, but I'll still remind people, this is the Callum Chambers that couldn't hack it at Fulham in a back four, and he got moved to midfield. So we've got to be careful um, there as well. So I think it's it's availability of players, you know. Let's get Holden. He's he played four under-21 games, under-23 games now. Let's give him a run out and... and but I, I'm so worried about sticking more defenders into this mess. To be honest, it's just gonna it's gonna kill any defender that we put there. They're just under so much pressure. So I, I can't answer that question. <laughs> Even though I went on for two minutes, well, I don't see them getting dropped. Is the bottom line <laughs> at the moment? <laughs> right. Next question is for all of you, starting with you, Carl. Ah. Uh, LF86 it says a cheeky question who gets sacked first between Lampard, Solskjaer and Emery I go Carl, Jason then Femi on this Lampard's not getting sacked this season 100% because Chelsea know that he's almost working one time, time behind his back so I would say 
Solskjaer, Emraid, and Lampard. Chase? Absolutely agree. Ollie's going to crash that best right into the DSS office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to agree. Like I said, I don't see us sacking Emery during the season. Um, Lampard, yeah, everything Carl said, really. Um, can't disagree, to be honest. Yeah, I think it's going to be Ole no longer at the wheel. Right, next question is just for you, Carl. It's from Foolish Watcher. Would you play Chambers and Holding together when Holding returns from his injury? And if so, would you start him straight away or bed him into the side? Well, I think he will start on Thursday. I think it'll be Holding and Chambers together. Or I've got a sneaky feeling he's going to go back three of uh, Chambers, Holding and Mustafi on Thursday against Frankfurt. I don't know why that's got a theme and that's what's going to be the team. But this is the perfect game. Like we were talking, I know we didn't really mention Frankfurt, but Frankfurt are no fools. I mean, they got to the semi final against uh, Chelsea last season in the Europa Cup. So they're going to be no pushovers. And then, yeah, they've lost their two strikers from last season. But uh, I guess if you're going to start him uh, chain, uh, holding, sorry, in a game, this game is going to be the one to to start him in. So I think Chambers and Holding will probably uh, start if he goes with back two. If it's back three, then Mustafi stops in there. Okay. Oh. Um, oh Jesus! My my angst put a massive big question in. Okay. Delete that <laughs> bit. Put this bit here. It, it doesn't all fit. You've only got a two hundred character limit. So there you go, Jace. For you. Um, uh mike from the the live show usually there he says uh why does this team struggle to keep up with the co- opponents when they turn up the intensity it's a, it is it a technical mental or managerial flaw on the second part that didn't fit examples to be considered palace huddersfield brighton chelsea from last season and liverpool watford from this season i think you get two stroke answer to that really um I think it's set up first and foremost. I think you know, if you're not playing position uh, players in, in positions of strength for them, then obviously you know they're going to struggle. Um, uh, the tactical setup as well. I, I just look at it. I just think you know, there's no faith in the tactical setup that he's putting out there. So therefore, players are nervous. They are scared, as as um, Jaka came out with. You know, when you know exactly what you know shape you're supposed to take in a defend when you're defending, when that comes second nature to you, you don't think about it. It's like you know um, Theo Walcott on goal when he's got time to think about it, he gets it all wrong. When it's a snap instant shot, you, you know you get it on target. You know, once you've got solid setups and solid. Um, uh, shapes of defence that you're supposed to fall into given any given um uh, uh, you know position on the pitch that then comes the confidence you know it's all about being well drilled it's all about you know putting you know putting players in positions to succeed and we just don't do that and you know <laughs> It's the big problem that we face at the moment. You know, you, if, if you're asking um, Jacques to, co- to cover, you know, in front of the back four, well, he's great up and down. He can get up and down, no problem. You know, he's, he's not quick, but he'll get up and down the path. But going sideways, Torreira's more built for that. He's the one who scans. He's the one who can cover across. Um, Guendouzi, he's still learning his discipline. But, you know, it's set up and putting players in position to succeed and we don't do it. Yeah, uh, that's superbly put. Right, final question from Twitter. This is for you, Femster, um, from Just a Gooner. Do you think the players are turning against Emery or just a section of the fans? Um, I know we had the, the Alan Smith thing earlier. I, I don't know if the players are turning on uh, Mr Emery. I think... I think turning is a, is a, is very very. If the players turn, that's a very. You, I think, would see an even bigger issue if the players are turned. So I think the players are still 
playing for him. I'm, the players can be confused about things without, um, you know, not not turning on the manager. With the fans, I think one of the things with the fans as well is the communication problem. Sometimes you can listen to Emery for five minutes and you, you don't even understand what he said, to be honest with you. And that's not even to do with the language barrier. It's more like, did he understand the question? That he, it's like maybe he should, he should just use a translator. I, I don't know what it is. Maybe, but he's not. He's not that charismatic. You know, you've got some managers that just seem to to have some char- charisma, like Jurgen Klopp. You know, he's not that type of character. So on the touchline, he's very you know fiery. But when you're listening to him. It doesn't convey like a clear message even to the fans, so I think the fans have just just got to stick with with it for now. You know, I, I, like I said, I don't see anything changing. So, you know, we, there was a lot of optimism coming into the season, so we just got to try and just just keep that momentum going. The atmosphere at the Emirates, the first few games, has been has been really really good. So we just have to try and just as a fan base, just do our part. You know, and then just just see what happens. You know, if the manager fails, let him fail because he failed, not because the fans just just turn on the players. To be honest, or turn on him. True, they don't do it if there's no reason. Yeah. Uh, right, we're moving into the live questions now. I've got two. I need one more. So if you put your questions in now, I'll pick the best one for Carl. So I oh know I'll pick the best one for Femi. This one's for you, Carl. From Loki, he put it in the chat box earlier in the show. Loki says, uh, "If uh, is that?" Ambulance, Jace. You all right? You look. I thought you look like you died. I thought that was your last text. Come and help me. <laughs> he says, uh, "Carl from Loki. If Emery knows he's going at the end of the season, does he really care enough, or is he filling time? Is he fiddling his thumbs until the end is is well, near?" Ho- hopefully, he should because how he finishes Arsenal could prepare him for his next job. So you th- like to think that. If he can get Arsenal to the Champions League, you know, that's like a miracle. So he can go into his next job interview and say, look, I got Arsenal into the Champions League. You've got to give me this job. So, yeah, I think he cares. Wasn't expecting an answer that bloody quick. Well done. Take note, Jace. Right, question for Jason. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't had a question yet for for, um, for Femi for the final question. This one... There's, there's one on um, uh, Twitter. Oh, fuck Twitter. This one for you, Jace, from fellow podcaster, the Mr. Arsenal podcast, who I think I was on his show a little while ago. There's so many now, I lose I lose track of what I've done. In fact, I was talking to Jason yesterday, he rang me, and he reminded me of something funny I said, and I had no idea what it was, and that was only the day before. Um, he said... Slang. <laughs> he says, uh, a question for the panel. Who do you think will stay at Arsenal longer, Ozil or Emery? So that's only for you, Jace. Ozil. Thank you very much. Um, people, if you can go and clip that, say that is the shortest number of syllables, letters and words you will ever get from the Welsh one. <laughs> right. The only question that has been here so far is uh, from Mad Wired One. I do hope this is something sensible because I've not checked it for you, Femi. Alba scored two great goals, but his lack of hold up play touches... A hold, um, but lack for his hold up play, comma, touch is 33. Ability to win duels and physicality was a big part of why Watford hurt. Am I wrong? Is he wrong? Yeah, I mean, you, you can't, I mean, you can't get to a point where you're, you're now starting to blame the, the player that's literally saving your bacon nearly every game. If your setup is not right around that player, what, what difference does it make? You know his strengths. Everyone knew Obama Yang's strengths when you, he was one of the best strikers in Europe. If he was not playing for Arsenal, look at it. Would you? And he was playing for, let's say, Chelsea and doing this. Would you start saying, oh, well, his hold ups play is not this or this is not that? You know, he's one of the best strikers in world football that we've got. Like, why are we picking holes? His game is his game. We have to build a team around him. If you're going to play a team around him, play 4-2-3-1 if you know his hold-up play is not good. You've got a decent number 10 in the club. You've got two decent number 10s, really, who can who can do that hold-up and feed it in to his strengths. So there's no point in complaining about the things that are good about the team. <laughs> What's the point can, of that? Can I, can I just add to that? It doesn't matter if you're Lacazette, but either we don't get players up in support yeah. if they do hold it up. So, you know... You, you can't slag it. You can't slag over our bit off. We know how he plays. We know his strengths, like you say. But 
we don't get players up in support. So what, what's the point in him holding the ball up? He's going to get robbed. True. And if you want some good news, Chelsea are losing 1-0. Oh, anyway, uh, Valencia at home. Fucking, oh, that is yeah, fucking awful. Right, Jace, anyway, we're going um, to um, do the... Oh, I'll do it, Cole. Um, right. the, if you go to our, our private chat, Jace... Now that did did have spaces and uh, enter and all that lot and paragraphs, but this uh, thing Steam Streamyard has put it all in one. Can you make sense of Fife's forum? There's um, there's two answers to the question: one from Bobby and the other one from. That's all I've got. Is winter is coming. Scroll down your tear. Yeah, I am, and then I got winter is coming for fuck's sake. That's all Scroll I got. Scroll up. Scroll up then. It's the one before that, I think. Yeah, you've got a, a question. Are Gunners who went Emery out crazy, or do they have a point? Bobby Chuck. Oh, all right, sorry, yeah. Chick, 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 the booty. I've made a pig's ear of that, haven't I? David Tarn, yeah. I've been in there. You're um, winter... <laughs> You've gone full Emery. Never go full Emery. <laughs> I tell you what, I, w I wouldn't like to have his job. I really wouldn't. He speaks um... just a good English. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, I'm leaving the country. <laughs> Don't tell Jason where I've gone. <laughs> I'm off. Thank you very much right. and good night. <laughs> Five small um, Question is, are Gunas who want Emery out crazy or do they have a point from Bobby Chakrabarty? Um, sorry, answer from Bobby Chakrabarty. The Gunas who want Emery out have a point about him. The whole team still looks disjointed and we're still conceding stupid goal. I reckon that he's being used to steady the ship and he's gone, and he'll be gone at the end of the season. Then Mayank Nagendran. It's not hard. I didn't it's even put his surname in there. That's what pro Jace is. That's why Jace is my favourite. Fucking what? Man. He's a top man. Don't, I've just been horrible to him, Carl. I'm trying to try and track oh, back. No, no. Like you didn't know that. Come on. Get real. Okay. Me and Danny, we Do the name on. again. Do the name again, Jace. Mayank Nagendran. Okay. Oh, and God. he says they may have a point. But it's too early, in my opinion. Let's consider this towards the end of November. Boys, what are your Nathan. thoughts? First, Femster. Um, I don't know. It's, it's a hard Swerve. one. I, 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 I don't like. I don't want to. I don't like saying. Femi, I don't like. Femi, Femi. <laughs> Shit or get off the pan, okay? This is I don't, not the I don't like Emery. I don't like Emery. I, I just don't like him. <laughs> I just, I just, that's just the honest truth. I, I'm not. I'm not attracted to anything that he's he's doing. Anything that he did, I, I'm just. I, I can't have him. To be honest with you, that's that's my honest truth. But I, I don't like slagging off the manager as well. <laughs> uh, to be fair, mate, you called Arsen Mr. Wenger earlier on. You've called him right, Mr. Emery. Okay, I think you've shown him more than enough respect. You do your opinion, bro. Um, Carl, your opinion. I'm not Emery out, but he's not the right man for the job. Uh, ask me who is, I don't know. I know there's uh, an Italian manager. He used to manage the event. This is available, which if you're looking at things now, he's probably in the front runner to uh, get the job rather than the Portuguese guy who seems to be uh, showing us his bum bum to try and get the job. No way he gets the job over um, in our club. But I'm not Emery out. However... Uh, he definitely is not the right man for the job. And come the end of the season, he would have to win the Europa, win the FA Cup and top four for me even to consider him for next season. But unless he wins at least two trophies and gets us into the top four, he, he doesn't stay. Winter is coming. Stick with a manager. Stop fucking around. It's not football manager. It's not FIFA. He's our manager until the end of the season. He's the man who's come in to take from underneath Wenger's shadow. Someone had to do it. He's he's just the Spanish Bruce Rioch. He'll be gone at the end of the season. So just 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 sit there and be happy that we have a bum young, we have Lacazette, we have Pepe, and then we have some other players. And so just enjoy it. If he's a Spanish Bruce Rioch, are you trying to say Pepe's the new Burkamp? Pepe's the new um Perry Groves. Oh, Wrong era. No one will know though, Carl. Carl, gentlemen's nods. Right, shout outs. Danny. Gentlemen's nods, because we're gentlemen and we nod. We don't shut, your shut your face. Right. Uh I'm gonna go first because I can't really. Uh 
my shout out is going to be to the last person that followed me, as always, and it's to uh, Charlie AFC, and that's Charles uh, NZ. EH, uh, give him a follow. I'm about to do exactly the same. Uh, that's mine. Uh, Femi, who's your shout out to? Gentleman's nod. Shut up. I'm looking at the last person that interacted with me, and it says at 70 sheesh. That's at 70 S H double E S. It's talking about. Uh, some squad uh, conversation that we had, so I'll give him a follow. He's a uh, good interaction all the time. Jason, the Welsh wonder, who is your gentle nod slash shout out to? I normally get called a Welsh wonder. To be fair, that's what I was expecting him to say. I was about to give you a round of applause. <laughs> I'm really, I'm really chuffed with that. You can fuck up the trains as much as you want, bro. Thank you. Um, my question, my, my shout out is for the one, the only, the magnificent Ed Loud. He's at Ed underscore Louder on Twitter. And um, he only joined Twitter last year after we did the mental health special from the walk from Selhurst Park to the Emirates, run by um, uh, Paul from Crystal Palace. Um, and he's really, he's done a video um, on YouTube. And the channel it's on is Cast No Shadow MMH. And that's at Cast No Shadow Mike Mike Hotel. Okay. And he talks about his experience with the walk and talk event and how that's helped him. He's a carer, he cares for his granddad. And this guy is an absolute hero. And I'm in awe of him. I'm in awe of the way he looks at life. I'm in awe of his bravery to put his feelings out there on video and to put it up on YouTube and the way he's just embraced what that 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 walk has done is truly inspirational. If you don't follow Ed Loud, if you don't appreciate what this guy's done, you're a fucking bottom feeder. That's all I'm going to say. Because the guy is a fucking hero. Really good. And Daniel, last and every means least, uh, who is your shout out to? It's the Arsenal's realist. Go and have a look at his stuff. It's hilarious. And he's got some good points. It's uh, I like every now and then I like to find a new um, Arsenal-based podcast or show. My list is now 91 since the beginning of time. It's 91 Arsenal-based podcasts and shows. So Almost not. as many as minutes as Jason was late today. And on that <laughs> note, I am going to sign off. So <laughs> thank you to everyone. Uh, Daniel, you have to be here, but thank you every single time you are here because without you, there really would be no uh, Bergkamp Wonderland. That's very kind of you. You're going to be this nice on Sunday. I Oh, just to let everyone know, I'm going to meet Danny for the first time <laughs> on Sunday. So if you hear of a wheelchair on the track, it was not my fault. <laughs> uh, Femi, thank you for uh, coming in. It's always a pleasure putting with you. I'm not sure what Danny's trying to do because every time you're on, I'm on. So I'm not trying yeah, to get yeah, us yeah. together. I'll I see know. what he's trying to do. <laughs> He maybe thinks I might be more comfortable. <laughs> yeah, trying to fill the quota. I'll see what he's talking yeah. about. I'm the Welsh quota. I don't care about you two. <laughs> Jason, thank you for stepping in at the very last minute. Although you was very, very late, you still came on time. And without you, this show would never have been put together. Can I just point out, when I joined the chat, so all I could hear was Carl saying, where is this Welsh fucker? You better fucking hurry up. Are you sure that's what I said, Jason? Yes, I am positive. Fucking bastard. Anyway, I am off to take some painkillers to go to bed because I've had two wisdom teeth removed today and I am in a lot of pain. So on that note, Daniel, Jason, Femi, Thank you very much for joining us, everyone. Keep it Arsenal. And um, we're going to beat Frankfurt on Thursday, that's for sure. Frankfurt, they're hot dogs. And the Frankfurt oh, show hot is... Come on! Cool. Carl, Jason and John on Thursday. That's it, isn't it, Jace? Yeah. Jolly good. So, see you all then. Goodbye. Oh, yeah. Fuck Ellis.